Hi friends, in the last video, we have seen that increased consumption of processed food along with other abnormal dietary patterns is the most important reason that is driving us towards diseases. And one of the most important reasons why processed food is actually not good is because of the presence of chemicals called food additives in the processed food. So today I have picked up an instant noodle and let us see what are the ingredients that are present in this uh, instant noodle. I have made the list of all these ingredients and let me read the list to you. So it says that the uh, it has uh, noodles which constitute 89% and there is a seasoning mix which is about 11%. So in noodles there is maida flour, there is edible vegetable oil and salt. And these are things that we normally use for regular cooking. And apart from it, it also contains acidity regulator, which is by the name INS 451 and INS 500. There is a color by the name INS 160C. There is an antioxidant by the name INS 319. And there is a thickener by the name INS 412. In the seasoning mix, apart from all these uh, food additives, it also has a flavoring agent by the name INS 631 and INS 627. So now let us see what are these various food additives that are normally added in most of the processed food. So why are food additives added to our food? They are added to our food to improve the color, the consistency, the texture of food, to make the food more stable and also to improve the shelf life of the food so that the food can remain stable without getting destroyed for a long period of time. More than 90 to 95 percent of consumers will not be aware of what these additives are and this is exactly what we are going to do in today's video. These food additives are known by various code names called the INS number or the E number. If the INS number is between 100 and 199, that's an artificial color. If the INS number is between 200 and 299, that's a preservative. If the INS number is between 300 and 399, that's an antioxidant. If the INS number is between 400 and 499, that's a thickener, stabilizer or an emulsifying agent. And if the INS number is between 500 and 599, that's an anti-caking agent or an acidity regulator. If the INS number is between 600 and 699, that's a flavor enhancer. And if the INS number is between 700 and 799, they are antibiotics which are normally used in meat products. If the INS number is between 900 and 999, they are artificial sweeteners and glazing agents. And other additional additives come under the name INS 1000 to INS 1599. So let us now see each one of them in slight detail. The first one would be a coloring agent. Coloring agent are given the name INS 100 to 199. There are various artificial colors that are used right from Allura Red. It can be a yellow color which is called the sunset yellow. There can be a blue color which is called a brilliant blue. There is an artificial green which is called a FCF green. And there is a black color which is responsible for the black color of soft drinks like Coke and Pepsi which is called the caramel. And it is important to note that most of these artificial colors are a derivative of petroleum products and they are associated with many diseases which we will come to it a little later. The next group of compounds are preservatives. So the primary function of the preservative is to increase the shelf life of that particular food. So they increase the shelf life by preventing the growth of bacteria and other microorganisms in that particular food. So there are two types of preservatives. One is a natural preservatives where salt, sugar, honey or uh, vinegar is added and there are artificial chemically synthesized preservatives. And the artificial preservatives that are commonly used are benzoids which are used in pickles, jams, fruit juices, soft drinks and various other products. And there is something called a propionic acid which is used in bakery products like bread and other things. We all know that if we keep the bread outside for few days, fungus starts growing on that particular bread. And propionic acid is an excellent inhibitor of fungi and other bacteria and that's the reason why it is added in bakery products. The other preservatives are sulfides which are used in dried fruits and nitrates and nit nitrates which are used in animal products. And all these preservatives 
increase the shelf life by inhibiting the growth of bacteria. And it is important to note that we have a lot of bacteria in our body. And people will be astonished to know that there are 30 trillion cells in our body and there are 40 trillion bacteria in our body. And more than 90% of these bacteria reside in the gut, especially in the small intestine. The right amount and proportion of these bacteria is extremely important for proper functioning of our body. These bacteria are not actually parasites, but they exist in a symbiotic relation. That is, we are benefited by the bacteria and bacteria is actually benefited from us. And it is common sense to understand that preservatives will damage the gut bacteria and destruction of gut bacteria is one of the most important reasons for development of many chronic diseases. The next group of compounds are called the antioxidants. The primary function of the antioxidant is to prevent breakdown of fats and oils. So antioxidants are added to any food which has fat or oil content in it. The commonly used antioxidants are BHA, BHT and TBHQ. And it is important to note that BHA and BHT are banned in European countries, Australia, New Zealand and Israel. The state of California in the United States of America has actually classified them as carcinogen. So carcinogens are products which can actually produce cancer. The next group of food additives are the emulsifiers, thickeners and stabilizing agents. So what are emulsifiers? Suppose we add water to oil. What will happen? Both will not mix because both have a different chemical and physical property. So to allow mixing of two liquids which normally do not mix, emulsifiers are added. In certain foods where we have to allow mixture of fat and water so that they do not get separated, emulsifiers are added. The examples of such foods are jams, sauces, bakery products, ice creams, etc. There are some problems with emulsifiers which have been reported like damage to the protective mucus layer of the intestine and also damage to the gut microbia. There was a study which was published in the reputed Nature Journal in the year 2015 by a French researcher by name Dr. Bernard Chassain who clearly showed that dietary emulsifiers uh, caused damage to the gut microbiota leading to the development of colitis or inflammation in the gut and metabolic syndrome in a study that was done on mouse. The other agents that are normally added are called thickeners. Thickeners are added to increase the thickness or the viscosity of the food. So to make certain foods thicker, these thickeners are added. Again the examples are soups, jams, jellies, ice creams and so on and so forth. And nobody would like an ice cream if it is watery in consistency. So people would enjoy a food like an ice cream or a soup only if it is thick. And to increase the thickness of these foods, thickeners are added. And one of the controversial thickener is INS407 which is also called carrageenan, which is a derivative of uh, CV. And there are various reports that this again causes damage to the gut microbial. The next group of compounds are flavoring agents. The primary function of these flavoring agents are to improve the taste or the flavor of that particular food. One of the most important and commonly used flavoring agent is called MSG, also called as monosodium glutamate. This MSG has a characteristic umami taste. So whenever we consume this product, what it does is it increases the secretion of saliva in the mouth. That is, the mouth starts to water and it improves the taste of any food to which this is added. And these flavoring agents are the reason why this instant noodle tastes much better than the noodle that is prepared at home. And there are also some artificial flavors which mimic the natural flavors of certain fruits like orange, banana, pineapple, etc. You might have seen on the ingredient list of some food products where it is mentioned as natural flavors. So let's see what are the natural flavors. Natural flavors means that the flavor is extracted either by an animal or a plant product. Just because it is extracted from by an animal or a plant product, that does not mean that it is totally safe. The process of extraction involves exposure to heat and use of various chemicals. And there are various reports which say that during the extraction process, various other food additives are actually added to these natural flavors. Just because it is mentioned that there is a natural flavor, it always does not mean that it is safe. And finally, let's see 
what are the health implications of using these food additives as per the guidelines of most government agencies say for example the us fda also called the us food and drug administration these compounds are classified as gras the meaning of gras is generally recognized as safe so what it suggests is generally it is safe but it is not 100% safe so let us consider some points to actually decide whether these products are safe or not but some of the products which were used earlier are now banned because of studies linking them to the causation of diseases so we do not know the products that we are using now after few years they might be banned because of some additional studies coming up saying that they are actually causing damage to our health and the second point is there is a permissible limit for all these food additives that means if it is used in within that permissible limit then there is no problem say for example the permissible limit is less than 0.02% if a product is within that permissible limit then it normally does not cause any problem but the permissible limit is only for that particular food product say for example you are consuming an instant noodle a chocolate a pack of biscuit a fruit juice and a soft beverage in a single day and all of them contain these food preservatives and you are most likely going to exceed the permissible limit and the third point is we do not know the interaction between various food additives normally when a study is done a single food additive is tested on an animal say for example mouse and its safety is decided and most food like the example of the instant noodle that we saw today contain four or five different food additives and we do not know what is the interaction between these food additives a classic example is a controversy that happened way back in 2006 where it was found that soft beverages contained harmful chemicals called benzene we all know that benzene is a carcinogenic chemical what was happening was sodium benzoate which was used as preservative in these soft beverages was interacting with ascorbic acid which was a acidity regulator and this was leading to the formation of benzene when the bottles of these soft drinks were exposed to light and extreme temperatures after this development many food companies changed their formulation in order to reduce the amount of benzene in their food products the us fda still says that the amount of benzene in these soft drinks is well within the permissible limits so this is just an example of one of the interaction that was reported earlier but there might be many more interactions that might be taking place between various food additives which could lead to harmful chemicals and the next and the most important factor is damage to the intestinal li lining and damage to the gut bacteria and there are various studies that have shown that food preservatives and food additives definitely damage the gut bacteria and the gut mucus layer thereby increasing the permeability of the gut so that the gut becomes more leaky leading to a condition called leaky gut syndrome the intestinal layer is a single cell layer which is protected by the mucus and this single cell layer acts as a barrier between the inside of the body and the food and the waste products that are present in the gut and whenever the gut starts becoming leaky these waste products or the toxic products starts entering inside the body and this incites a immune reaction and the body's defense mechanism starts reacting with these waste products leading to development of inflammation in the gut when the immune reaction is continuous and severe the body defense mechanism of the body fails to recognize between the body's own cell and the foreign substances thereby leading to the development of autoimmune reactions that is the immune cell starts attacking its own body leading to the development of autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis psoriatic arthritis eczema skin allergy and various other conditions and this food additives have also been linked to obesity and development of other chronic diseases like diabetes and so on and so forth and there are also increased incidence of allergy asthma migraine etc some food additives like the coloring agents the bha and bht and other food preservatives have also been linked to cancers so to summarize i can compare these food additives to a cigarette where smoking a single cigarette will not cause you any problem but if you continue to smoke more cigarettes and continue this for a long period of time then definitely that is going to cause multiple problems similarly if you are exposed to these food preservatives once in a while then obviously that will not cause any problem but constant exposure of these food preservatives for a long period of time will certainly increase your risk of getting multiple diseases so it is high time that we become aware of these food additives 
and start reading labels or ingredient list that is present in each and every food product. So in my next video, I'll try to focus on how to reduce our exposure to these harmful food additives. I hope this video was useful to you. If you found value in this video, please like and share this video with your friends and please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. Till then, take good care of yourself. Thank you.